All right, well, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres, and uh, I didn't make it to the whiteboard today. Uh, life kind of happened. We were uh, doing some processing today and just couldn't make it to the whiteboard. So it's still light out and actually got some pretty good light today. We got to see the sun a little bit, some blue sky. I haven't seen that in a while. So while the light is still good, I thought I'd come out and show some of the things that I've been talking about lately. There's one of them right there. That's a hay rake, all right? If, if we're talking about feed, we're talking about hay. And if you're gonna make hay, what hay is is you cut grass when it's long. You, you let it sit out there in the sun for a little while and dry out a little bit. <clears throat> and then you rake it into what they call a wind row, and then you bale it up. But let, let me talk about that in a minute. I'm, just, I'm here right now. I just walked out to these guys. Um, they didn't get looked at very much today. So these are the calves. This is actually Ruby right here. She's uh, Rose's calf. And so I guess they're near about, mm, oh, 20 weeks or so, maybe. And her and that black one, Cole, and this little fella over here, Merriweather, are about the same age. This one here is a heifer um, that had a foot problem and came from the farm that my wife works at. And... I don't know, maybe we'll milk her, I don't know. That might be my experience for milking a, a Holstein. You see the coloration on this cow, or this heifer? This is a Holstein. So is the one behind it, Merriweather. That's a Holstein. Um, that little fellow over there, the black one, is a cross between a Wagyu and a Holstein. Okay, and this is caring for them. This is, this is their area. They have these little hutches that they can get into and you know they have five of them but they used two of them but most nights they just sleep right here. Now with calves <clears throat> um, we've found that when you take them off milk we like to bolster their 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 intake with a grain. It's sort of a calf feed. It's made for them and it's got molasses on it, so it encourages them to eat it. They get about two and a half gallons between the bunch of them per day. And then the rest of the time, they're just eating hay like this. Now, you may say, well, they're, they're stepping all over that hay and they're laying in it. And, yeah, that's true. Um, and that's what calves do. Uh, luckily, unlike a goat, if a goat steps on a piece of hay, they will not eat it. If it hits the ground, they will not eat it. They could be starving and they won't eat it. <clears throat> but calves, on the other hand, they will. And that's a good thing. I did put a round bill there, and I didn't protect it at all because I did want them to have some bedding. They were laying out on the hard ground, and it, it's tough on them when they do that. So I like to keep them insulated. And in their huts, we put straw in their huts. And what straw is, is it's the stalks and the stems from grain crops, say like wheat or barley. So they just take the, the top, um, you know, little uh, like head of, of grain off the top and then everything else just gets kicked out the back of the, the harvester or the combine. And then they roll that up and they bale it. And that makes better bedding than hay. Hay is for eating. <clears throat> okay, so let me show you the first piece of equipment Just so you have an idea of what this stuff is. This is a rake It's a hay rake And it's uh, driven by uh, a belt that runs off that back wheel So when the tractor pulls it It makes this assembly here turn and it rakes uh, the hay that would be in a, a flat pattern, you know, we've just gone over it with a, with a hay bine or a sickle bar, and it's just laying there. Well, this will roll it into a, a windrow, they call it. And I don't know why they call it that. Maybe it's like if 
the wind was to blow and blow it in, blown it into a row. They call it a windrow. So, and a windrow looks like a, a roll of hay going, going out there. <clears throat> and uh, we only do that after the hay or the grass has dried a little bit. This tractor, by the way, is probably older than the rake, or they might be contemporaries. The tractor is a 1946 Alice Chalmers. It still runs fine. Okay, the other equipment is over here. And this equipment is, you could call it old, but I don't know, it's made in the 60s, and I don't think anything that came about in, in the 60s would be old. But this is a, a haybine. Sometimes they call them a, a wind rower, wind rower, or sickle bar mower. It does two things. You pull it with a tractor. It's got a power takeoff uh, shaft on it that turns this rake assembly in front here. That rake assembly pulls it into a cutting bar under there. It's called a sickle bar. And the hay stalks get cut one time. And then it rolls up into what they call a conditioner. And the conditioner is a steel roller. You see that steel roller there? And then there's a rubber roller under it. And when the, the stalks roll through there, they get crushed. And then when it's laying out in the sun, sometimes you can lay it out there in the sun for a day. Sometimes usually maybe it has to sit overnight. And then a full day the next day. And when it gets to a point where I say it's dry enough, then we bale it. And uh, when I first started doing this, Oh, I was told there are meters that you can get and all this other stuff. Pretty much if it looks good enough, it's good enough. And then you bale it up. I put it in the barn. They eat it. I don't know, maybe the nutrition is not optimum, but who knows. I think a lot of that stuff is made up to make it seem complex so people won't do it. That piece of equipment was about two thousand dollars and I did have to put some repairs into it I've pretty well gone through it I've had it for 10 years now so I've pretty well gone through it and it was made in the 60s it should make it into the next millennium the baler it's the same make to Heston these are what what they would call open source uh, pieces of equipment you don't hear that very much but like the bearings for this, I can get at Napa Auto Parts. The chains for that, Napa. You know, they're, they're open source things. They're not specialized chains. If you go with some of the more popular um, names that we hear about these days, you know, the green name and the blue name and the red name, they make parts that are common to them only. So if you have that equipment, you have to go to that dealer. And I can tell you, a chain for this, you know, this chain on the side, it almost looks like a bicycle chain. It's a little thicker. Get that from Napa for 20 bucks. But if I had a John Deere unit like this and I had to go through the dealership, it would be twice that, you know. All right, that's just a little bit on equipment. Um, but I would always go with the older stuff that is the open source stuff like this. And this stuff is, it is old, but I mean, you only use it for, I don't know, 15 hours a year, 15, 20 hours a year, and then it sits. And it's too bad that I don't have a place to put it in, um, but that's the way it is. I just don't have the space for it. So this is a round baler, and this will make thousand pound uh, round bales. And I have not weighed one of them, but that's what the book says. There's no purpose for me to weigh them because I don't sell hay. So, you know, I don't need to. I just feed hay. All right. And this also is a 60s model. Um, it's something that you'd have to see it operate. It's got belts. And we straddle the windrow with the tractor. 
and it goes up in there and it rolls it and it rolls and gets bigger and bigger and then when it's big enough I hit a switch and it um, puts a string on it there's actually two stringers on that one and then they automatically cut and then I hit a lever and the back opens up and it kicks it out the back and we get a thousand pound bale coming out the back then this is a hay wagon and you kind of need that because if you make a hundred round bales you got to get them up to the barn and if you bring them up one at a time it's going to take you all day this i can bring up let's see about 12 at a time right and the, the goal for me when i make hay is i like to get it in and stored before it gets rained on which can be tricky in the summertime and you know i got this at an auction and i think i paid 250 bucks for it and i had to repair it but that's kind of the name of the game. One of the things that we live by is our repair shop. So we buy stuff that is broken and we get a super deal on it. And then we put a little bit of our time and elbow grease into it and get it fixed. And it works just as good as if it was new. But if I was to buy something like that new, I don't, it would be several thousand dollars, I would think. And the hay equipment to get stuff that is new 10 years old very expensive i went that route when i first started and i actually borrowed money to buy hay equipment and the baler was seventy five hundred dollars the hay bind was sixty five hundred dollars and we got to the point we thought we had a lot of money tied up in equipment that we weren't using very much and when we need to repair it, we need to run to the dealer all the time. So we switched over to an open source uh, brand. And it's not as flashy. I don't have people driving by beeping their horn at me, but uh, it's still fine. And then this is, this is hay storage, right? All it is, this keeps the rain off of it. This is a clear span building. We've used this for many, many things. We used to brood chicks in here. We used to grow chickens in here. Then we used it for a maintenance area for several years. Um, it's nice and it's bright, but it's cold and it's hot. So it's much better to just put hay in and it might not look like it, but there's a lot of hay right there, right? That's, that's more hay than I need. But it's kind of like having, you know, money in the bank when I have extra hay because I can feed hay to my pigs, I can feed hay to these laying chickens, feed it to the calves, feed it to the cattle. All right, so I didn't make it to the whiteboard. I'll try and catch up tomorrow. That's what I got.